Today, we're showing you the different approaches to building impact evidence. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Gaines, lead trainer at SOPACT, and if you are a mission-driven organization, asset manager for an impact fund, fund of funds, impact advisor, social impact accelerator, foundation, or an asset who works with stakeholders like social businesses or nonprofits, you're in the right place. This is a video series in which you will learn the step-by-step -step process for raising impact capital through better social impact measurement. Once you've defined your impact strategy, you can approach impact data collection and analytics in a number of different ways. And don't forget to show how we've impacted you by smashing that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next videos in this series. So without further ado, let's dive into eight key patterns of demonstrating impact, the lean data way. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. Your financial and social impact data is spread across multiple people's hard drives. You're creating a master spreadsheet every time more data comes in and managing all of your data is becoming more and more challenging by the day. If you connected with any of that, here's a step-by-step -step strategy for you to streamline your enterprise so that you can build a robust impact measurement strategy. I'll break down each approach into its primary users, reasoning, benefits, and its challenges. So let's hop into it. Number one, define impact strategy. Many organizations are ready to start thinking about impact strategy. And whether you are a funder or an organization working in the field, you might want to align to multiple frameworks like IRIS, Impact Management Project, and Sustainable Development Goals. You can choose to use a theory of change model, a logic framework, or the five dimensions of impact. What is really relevant is to be clear about the outcomes or effects, meaning what is actually changing in the community because of your intervention. And in case you missed our last video, we gave you a step-by-step -step process to creating an impact management strategy in detail. That strategy will inform your approach to impact evidence. So be sure to check that video out. The link will be in the description below. Defining a strategy is the perfect option if your organization has been around for a while, but so far has only collected operational or financial data. For example, loan data. It also works well for young social enterprises and new funds. By defining your impact strategy, you'll dictate how your organization collects and aggregates data. Who are your stakeholders? Are they grantees, investees, maybe the end beneficiaries? What are the KPIs that you need to observe over time? This strategy benefits by showing funders and donors that you know what you're working to accomplish and gives them a way to monitor how far you are from your community improvement goals. However, this does present some challenges. You will have to start allocating some budget to data collection and reporting tools. Whether you collect information from your grantees, investees, or in beneficiaries, don't underestimate the amount of effort that goes into collecting quality outcome results. Number two, programmatic reporting. This approach is great for organizations that may have collected data on stakeholders such as demography, which includes race, sex, religion, locality, and or financial data. If your organization doesn't have the resources to undertake a completely new impact strategy, you can still use the data you currently have to derive some insights of your program's performance. Here's the reasoning. You have to start somewhere, and your donors and funders will appreciate the fact that you're at least making an effort to understand who your stakeholders are and what benefits they're receiving directly from your services. This is beneficial for you because you'll gain a much greater understanding of who your beneficiaries are and what outcomes you need to be looking for when your organization is ready to proceed in the future. The challenge of this approach is that you might require expert help in order to learn how to transform programmatic or outcome data into actionable KPIs. Number three, stakeholder voice. This approach is great for an organization that is experienced in collecting quantitative data and is looking to expand into collecting other types of data in their metrics. Here's the reasoning. It's very important to understand if our stakeholders have the same perception of our services that we think they do based on the quantitative data that we've already collected. Collecting this data gives you a chance to understand what they're saying, thinking, or feeling about the services that you're providing to them. At the end, numbers don't mean anything if we're not able to alleviate the problem that we're actually addressing. The challenges with this approach? You need a well thought through questions that will generate valuable information and that could require expert help. You're also going to need a good balance between qualitative and quantitative questions, stories from the field, and asset manager annotations to fully understand the context of what's presented. Number four, performance improvement. 
This approach is primarily great for incubators and accelerators that have a short-term relationship with the underlying entrepreneurs. The reasoning. In this case, it might be difficult to define outcome metrics, since the contact happens in such a short period of time and at such an early stage in the entrepreneur's journeys. The benefit. You can measure the performance of the incubator or accelerator in terms of how useful their intervention is, whether that's to get funding, to acquire new business skills, or to get in contact with new advisors. The great thing is that might be enough at this particular stage. The challenge is that it still requires well-defined metrics that will be applied at the beginning of the intervention. These serve as the baseline to be analyzed against after a set period of time to better understand what improved for the community development organization. Number five, outcome improvement. This approach is perfect for organizations that work with stakeholders and collect data from them to measure outcome performance over time. The reasoning. It's important to understand the impact we have on a group of people, as well as pointers on how the impact is experienced by individuals. This information can be very helpful in certain cases. For instance, using averages to derive insights can be dangerous because it can skew results towards the positive. The benefit. While cohort analysis helps us in understanding the overall benefit our services had on the people, individual analysis gives us a deeper understanding into how the data may look skewed when viewed only from the perspective of the cohort. The challenge? This is a pretty difficult approach to master. A thorough analysis process requires knowledge on sophisticated tools and methodologies that let you learn from the data that you may have collected. Without a methodology to customize the way that data is processed, an organization can quickly get discouraged from moving down this route. Number six, an impact management project. This approach benefits organizations, large and small, that are looking to start their impact management journey. The Dutch government wants to create jobs in the palm oil and coconut industry in East Africa. For new impact evidence to flow, the industry expects impact evidence. One of the organizations we're working with intends to adopt IMP5 dimensions and holistically collect impact evidence to attract these investments and help the farmers establish sustainable businesses. The reasoning. Virtually every successful organization, primarily motivated by high financial outcome, puts a lot of effort into understanding how their product benefits stakeholders. The same level of rigor is ideal for impact-driven organizations as well. This approach is extremely beneficial in that it allows organizations to focus on how they're actually generating impact as opposed to how they're going to measure it. The challenge? It might be complex for an organization to convert what they currently have into IMP5 dimensions. Number seven, social return on investment. The primary user? This is great for a more mature organization that already has a robust stakeholder data collection. The reasoning? In the case of asset managers, it only makes sense if you're allowing your entrepreneurs or grantees to collect high quality data, aggregate it, analyze it, and perform all the necessary calculations in a streamlined fashion. Also, it's a decent way to compare dissimilar investments in terms of how much impact each of them generates. In the case of organizations working directly with stakeholders, it only makes sense if you have the resources to define high quality financial proxies that are relevant for your geography. The benefit? It gives a financial valuation of the impact that is generated by an organization, which is easy to understand and is very comparable to other organizations. The challenge is, the process to get to that valuation is very time consuming. It requires a person with enough knowledge of the SROI methodology as defined by Social Value International. Last but not least, number eight, aggregating results from partners. This approach is primarily for asset owners and asset managers. Here's the reasoning. For these organizations, it can be difficult to collect data directly from end beneficiaries or even to create realistic outcome metrics. It's important to understand the level of maturity of their underlying organizations. If we're talking about entrepreneurs with just a few years in the market, it's possible to start with some outcome metrics that at a high level tell us the number of jobs created and the gender distribution at management level positions. As an example, if we're talking about organizations with more experience in data collection, you can jointly create a strategy with an impact theme, which will have the three or four metrics required to fully understand your portfolio's impact. The benefit, collecting the results directly from your partners ensures that they also have a process in place to obtain data directly from their communities. The challenges, the level of granularity of your metrics will determine on the maturity of the underlying organizations 
and their relationship with the asset owner or manager. And there you have it, eight approaches to building impact evidence. And I'm curious, how are you tracking impact in your project? Let me know and drop a comment down below. Be sure to like this video if you learned something new, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. And as always, don't forget to go to SOPAC.com for all of the additional resources we have on social impact measurement. Until then, I'm Chris Gaines, and I'll catch you in the next video.